Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice functional equation. Suppose f of x is continuous and we have the equation f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y minus xy. And we're going to be solving for f of x. All right, let's go ahead and manipulate this equation a little bit to turn it into something we can solve. So for that purpose, first of all, I'm going to add xy to both sides. That should isolate f of x plus f of y on the right hand side. And then I want to add something to both sides so that I can complete the square. Now on the left hand side, I have xy. If I had 2xy, I could just add x squared plus y squared. So let's think about it for a minute. If I had 2xy instead of xy, I could just add x squared plus y squared, and that would make it that would make it x plus y quantity squared. This is called completing the square. Obviously, you are probably more familiar with having the x squared and then adding the 2xy, but it doesn't matter. We're just adding what is missing to make it a complete square. Great. So since I don't have x, uh, I don't have 2xy. I have xy. I need to add half of this. So this is how it goes. I'll be adding half of x squared plus y squared to both sides. Of course, I have to do the same thing on the right hand side. And then I notice that I can split it up or on the left hand side, I can actually make a common denominator and write this as x squared plus y squared plus 2xy divided by 2. And on the right hand side, I can kind of split up the x squared plus y squared over 2 and write it like this f of x plus x squared over 2 plus f of y plus y squared over 2. So it's more evenly distributed. Now, at this point, we're going to do something super important. Remember, our goal was to complete the square. So what we have on the left hand side can be written as x plus y quantity squared divided by 2. And on the right hand side, we kind of see something similar. I hope you see what I see. To be or not to be, we don't have a B or C here. But we're going to use another variable, which is A. So what do you notice about this? Well, if you kind of separate this into pieces like this and like that, you do see a pattern, something that is repeated. What is it? Well, I have a function plus half of the variable squared and then f of y, the same function, but this time with a different variable and added the same thing. And on the left hand side, instead of the x, our argument is x plus y, but we're still squaring it and dividing by 2 and adding it to the function. So we pretty much have the same thing here. That kind of tells us that we can make an assumption and call this function g of x. This is a commonly used strategy for solving functional equations. You can call you know, a function plus minus something else another function and then try to solve because this is going to simplify the process. So this gives you the following. Since g of x is defined as f of x plus x squared over 2, you notice that if I replace x with y, I get g of y. So g of y becomes f of y plus y squared over 2. And if I replace x with x plus y, and that motivation comes from the left hand side, I get f of x plus y plus x plus y quantity squared divided by 2. All of this comes from the definition of g of x, which we basically defined as f of x plus x squared divided by 2. Great. Now, let's go ahead and substitute everything into our equation. The left-hand side becomes g of x plus y. And I think you know why. The right-hand side is made up of two pieces, g of x and g of y. So it looks like this. Now, this is one of Cauchy's functional equations, remember? A very easy, actually, function to solve. And how can I solve it? Well, without proof, I'm just going to give you uh, what type of functions will satisfy, but the proving it is not going to be difficult. 
And you can also easily verify this. Uh, so I'm going to tell you that a function that is additive like this, first of all, I want you to observe a couple things. For example, if you replace y with 0, you get g of x equals g of x plus g of 0. So from here, you get g of 0 equals 0. That's one of the observations I want you to make. The second observation I want you to make is replacing y with negative x. I get g of uh, x minus x, which is 0, equals g of x plus g of negative x. And since g of 0 is equal to 0, we can set them equal to 0. From here, we get g of negative x equals negative or the opposite of g of x. This tells you that g is an odd function because that's what odd functions do. So this quick observation shows us that g is odd, g of 0 is equal to 0. And obviously, it doesn't follow from here, but I'm just going to tell you that g of x needs to be a function like ax. g of x is a linear function whose y-intercept is 0. And when you plug it into the equation, like if you replace x with x plus y, you're going to notice that is equal to a times the quantity x plus y, which can be written as ax plus ay. And ax means f of x, I mean g of x, that's what I meant. And a, a y is equal to g of y. So our equation is actually satisfied by this equation. Of course, this doesn't mean that we prove that this is the only solution, but I'm telling you that this is going to work. All right, great. Let's go back because we're not looking for g of x. We're looking for f of x. Remember that? So what was our assumption? Our assumption was that our assumption was that g of x is equal to f of x plus x squared over 2. And we just found out that g of x can be written as ax, where a is a constant. Of course, in this case, I should say that a is a constant, a is a real number, so on and so forth. All right, great. So now, our, since our goal was to solve for f of x, from here, we can isolate f of x and subtracting x squared over 2 from both sides is going to give us the answer ax minus x squared over 2. So basically, if a is a constant, let's just say it's an element of the set real numbers, then f of x is going to be in this form. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.